In this Composer Notes tutorial, we'll set up a control loop in an F4T controller. Most applications of this controller use at least one control loop. The fundamental parts of a control loop are the input block, which provides feedback of the measured process value from a sensor, the loop block, which compares the measured process value to the set point and calculates the necessary output to achieve and maintain set point, and the output block which delivers the required power to the load according to the signal from the loop. In this example, we'll use the universal input from module 1 to measure the temperature for feedback to the loop. In the library, you can see this controller has two loop blocks. Let's put one here next to the input. This controller has a no arc output on module 4 that we can use to switch power to the heater. Let's move that near the loop block. I know we want to connect these blocks so they'll work together, but the loop block has a lot of receivers and transmitters. To be sure I connect to the right ones, let's check the help for the loop block. Not far down is a table that describes the receivers and transmitters. The receiver labeled PV is where the feedback signal connects. The second half of the table describes the transmitters. Since this loop will control heat, HT is an obvious choice to connect to the output. Whenever you connect the signal to an output, stop and think what will happen when this connection is made. Will the output turn on and deliver heat or other energy in a way that is not safe? Outputs connected in the function block diagram view begin to function immediately. Ensure that energy sources are disconnected and locked out until you have completely configured and tested your application. Since there is no power connected to the module's output terminals or the heater, it's safe to connect the signal. By the way, it doesn't matter that the input and output are on different modules. They'll work together because they're connected to the loop block in the function block diagram. Now that the blocks are connected, let's make sure each block is set up to work the way we need it to. To see the settings for the input block, right-click and choose Parameters. Setting the input's name adds a label to the diagram. The most important settings for the input are the ones that tell the controller how to convert the sensor's signal to a process value. That means choosing the appropriate setting for sensor type and any other parameters related to the type of sensor you are using. Since we're using a Type J thermocouple, the default settings are correct. The help for the input block has links to sections for each sensor type. There you'll find descriptions of the parameters that apply. The output block also has a name which I'll set to Chamber Heater, but otherwise it will work for this application without adjusting any other settings. Some types of outputs are capable of switching much more frequently and can be set to either fixed or variable time base. When the output is driving a resistive load such as a heater or a fast switching power controller such as a solid state relay, using variable time base can improve performance. To drive slow switching devices such as mechanical relays, use the fixed time base option. Now it's time to set the loop's parameters. The name you set here for the control loop is displayed on the F4T's home page and elsewhere in the controller. Use the control action parameter to set the loop up for heating, cooling, or both heating and cooling. You can also use loops for controlling process variables besides heat, such as relative humidity. To choose the correct control action for a process variable other than temperature, in general, if you want the controller's output to decrease as the process value rises, choose heat. If you want the controller's output to increase as the process value rises, choose cool. There are many other control loop parameters. They are described in the help. Setting the proportional bands, integral, and derivative by auto-tuning is covered in another Composer Notes tutorial.